All right. Starting the presentation. It's still visible. Trying to make sure. Okay, the political. Okay. okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Right. So Caribbean policies, government types, and political blocks. That is what the political definition is really all about. That is what it's all about. Right. So starting, we I mentioned the European imperialism. Right. For that to exist within regions, they need to impose their laws and their systems. Right. So we're going to start as far back as the Treaty of Tordesillas. All right. Just another policy, right? The Treaty of Tordesillas is something that you also look at in the historical definition as we will branch from the historical definition going into the political definition, right? This was one of the first major policies regarding the Caribbean in history, hands down, right? The Treaty of Tordesillas in 1949, where the Roman Catholic nations, right, with help, obviously, of the Pope himself, right, helped divide the world itself, right, into Spanish and Portuguese regions or spheres of influence in order to resolve the rivalry and the issues between the Portuguese empire and the Spanish empire, right? So instead of these fellow Catholics, right, warring over the lands, right, they just divided them up and said, all right, you have this piece and you have that other piece. Right? So it's a shared agreement between Spain and Portugal. And this also enabled the Spanish monopoly within the Caribbean and within the Western Hemisphere, really, and the Portuguese monopoly, somewhat the Portuguese monopoly within the Indian Ocean. All right? But we're not going into the Portuguese because our syllabus does not co cover that. All right? But that's basically what's the first major poli poli well, policy all right? is for regarding the Caribbean. All right? So the drawing the line, and this is a picture of the line that they would have drawn, right, on a old map, right, showing where the Spanish colonies would lie and where the Portuguese colonies would lie. So this is the first major policy, right, or the one of the first major policies. Go ahead. Um, sir, so question, so, so that, sir, that is why I think they said some part of Brazil, the um, still the Portuguese. Yeah, Brazil is a Portuguese-speaking nation. Its primary language is Portuguese, yes. All right. So Brazil is Portuguese, all right? And uh, nations that are to the right of the line, right? Nations that are t predominantly east of the line tend to have Portuguese influence, right? So you have your mic open? I think you still have... Somebody has their mic open? Let me just... And now I pay sixteen. So let me know. just mute her real quick. Actually, they tidy. All right. So moving on. Right. So that is really the influence there. Right. So everybody, every nation or territory to the west of the line would be Spanish, and to the east of the line, right, would be Portuguese. All right. So that's it. All right. So let's have a look at this now. The asiento is another important thing. There's a part of this historical process as well. And one of the first type of contracts influenced within, well, introduced in the Caribbean, right? So the asiento is Spanish, of course, right? So the encomienda lasted only a few years. In, and in, 19, in 1518, the asiento marked the permission by the king of Spain to bring African people to work in the Caribbean, right? So in 1519, the Africans were the third set of people in the New World, right? The first set were the Amerindians, the second set were the Europeans, and then the third set were the Africans, right? For persons who do History Unit 1, you might argue that the Africans were here first, using the Van Sertima thesis, but we will hint at that in the historical process, right? But genuinely, generally, right, to the untrained eye or to just skimming history, right? They are the third set of persons to exist in the Caribbean, right? So the asiento was a type of contract, also another policy, right? So just influencing that. Now, let's look at the interlopers, right, within the Caribbean after Spanish um, control, per se. So after Spanish control, there were three, the three major nations here, right, that came into the Caribbean were um, from England, the nowadays the Great Britain. Let's just call nowadays um Great Britain, right? Um, but England in the past because Great Britain formed um a little bit later, right? So we have that, right? 
well, the United Kingdom formed a little bit later, right? We have the Netherlands as well, and we have France, all right? So these are the major powers that really came in and challenged Spanish power within the Caribbean, all right? So their, in, their influence really, really is deep within the Caribbean, and we're going to be looking at the different sections of the Caribbean, right? The different territories that fall under their control, right? So let's have a look at that, all right? So within the Caribbean, we're just going to be looking at the examples, right, of the different areas, right, that have the different political systems that stem from these different, um, what, what I call interlopers, right? So the constitutional monarchy is one of the huge, um, hugely debated, right, type of political system within the Caribbean, all right? Can anybody just let me know within their own words what a constitutional monarchy is, per se? What is it? What is it about? Informate what it is is on the screen, but let me know in your own words what is a constitutional monarchy. Just in like a one sentence. Nobody? You know, it would be rather lovely if somebody unmuted their mic and just uh, let me know what it, it is. Go ahead. The constitution, constitutional monarchy is the political system where a king or queen is the head of state and a governor general is, us, is usually appointed to represent the head of state. All right. All right. So we have that. Wonderful, right? So the system of government is really interesting in which obviously the, a monarch is the head of state, right? So we have a monarch as a head of state and we have a governor general, right, as a proxy between, you know, between the parliament of the country, per se, and the monarch, right? So it's a representative in a sense. Obviously, our monarch within the Caribbean of our constitutional monarchies, you know, is King Charles, right? So the constitutional monarchies across the Caribbean, just let me know if there are any issues here, right? Antigua and Barbuda, the Bahamas, of course, Grenada, Jamaica, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines, right? There should be, I think, there might be more, right? But these are examples. So examples are fine. And you guys have more than enough examples, right? So we have those constitutional monarchies across the Caribbean. The next thing I would just want to note, right, is that this is important for us to understand the Westminster system of government that governs constitutional monarchies, right? So it's governed by const um, parliamentary sovereignty and, it, well, in a sense, right? Some amount of constitutional supremacy as well. I know that law students should have heard this over and over again. Bicameral legislature, meaning consisting of two hosts, the upper host, right? The host of lords and the lower host, the host of commands, right? In a sense. Right, the cabinet system appointed an executive branch of government appointed by the prime minister. The collective re responsibility, in a sense, right? So you guys can look at all of these terms. I put them there. You're gonna get the PowerPoint, so you guys can get them and go through them. And we also have fusion of powers, in a sense, right, between the prime minister and the cabinet, right? So we're gonna be looking at these types of um system, right, when we talk about the legal process within the Caribbean, right? So what the how does law affect the Caribbean the justice system? How does it work? Because we're going to be looking at separation of powers, etc. All right. So that's the Westminster system of government, and that really forms um that's really the type of government within the constitutional monarchy. All right. The syllabus makes special mention of it. That's why I have that there. All right. So let's read it up. The next type of government we have is the parliamentary republic, which is different from the constitutional monarchy. So what is the difference between the constitutional monarchy and a parliamentary republic? Anybody? What is the difference? Please repeat the question. What is the difference between a parliamentary republic and a constitutional monarchy? Mm -hmm. Just let me know what you think the difference is. You don't have to search it up. Go ahead. I would believe that the constitutional monarchy is where the... Um, what to say? Well, the people in power don't have complete control over their parliament, and with the parliamentary republic, the 
presidents have complete control over what goes on in the country. All right. Okay. So let's have a look at that then. So with the constitutional monarch, we have the head of state being a monarch, right? And note that it is not a republic. These nations are not republics, right? So a lot of persons love talking about the democratic republic. No, none of them are democratic republics. They're constitutional monarchies. None of them are the democratic republics. So hmm, democracies, no, they're constitutional monarchies, right? They're democratic in nature, but they're constitutional monarchies, right? So you see that entire voting thing, the governor general has something to say about that, all right? But you guys can look in your constitutions as it relates to what can happen with how your prime minister is selected, right? But with parliamentary republics now, it is general. They are generally democratic in nature, right? So this is where people tend to have more voting power, democratic power, and a president is tend. You know, well, we have presidents. Um, can presidents can be voted in? I do believe that presidents can be voted in. Just let me know, right? If anybody hears from Guyana or Trinidad and Tobago, just let me know whether or not your presidents are voted in or they are just ceremonially chosen. Right, but presidents are generally voted in, right, as well as prime ministers in a sense, right, and the prime ministers tend to be the heads of government completely, right, using um well with the confidence of the president, right, um making decisions and stuff like that, right, with the parliament, right, for the good governance of the country, right. So the parliamentary republics, right, a republic that is run by a parliament, right. Trinidad and Tobago and Guyana are the two main examples that we have of that within the Caribbean, right? Um, I, you know, I forgot to add Barbados to this. Um, yeah, I think Barbados should have been added to it. I forgot to add Barbados. Yeah, but add Barbados to it. I think it was November. I'm not Bayesian, but November 11 to 16 in that region, right? Um, Barbados, Barbados became, you know, a parliamentary republic, right? So you could add that to the list. Right, presidential republics now. Right, so the presidential republic is a bit different. Right, um, where the president tends to be overall the leader of the country, where prime ministers don't really exist all that. Right, and presidential republics within the Caribbean are Dominican Republic and Haiti. Right, so these are two presidential republics that we have within the Caribbean. All right. Um, the communist state that we have within the Caribbean, so a communist state is a system where the government, often being led by a single political party, right, one party system, controls all aspects of economic and social life, right? More economic life, actually, but we're going to discuss this in the so in sociology, right, in the sociological aspect, right, of the of Caribbean cities, right? But we have this, a communist state um, in the Caribbean, right? We're going to be looking at, you know, the rise and fall of other communist states within the Caribbean in the historical um, process, right? So, Cuba is our own, is our last remaining communist state within the Caribbean, right? Um, all of our other Caribbean, um, Caribbean states that were communist in nature, socialist in nature, would have been Jamaica, Grenada, Guyana, right? Haiti, in somewhat, right? Some other states have been socialist in nature, right? And communist in nature, but Cuba is the only remaining one. All right. We also have overseas territories that are directly governed by the seats of government or the crown, depending on the territory. Right. So Anguilla is a British overseas territory, such as Bermuda, right, as well as the British Virgin Islands. Right. We also have Cayman Islands, direct uh, directly under the control of the crown, and Montserrat, right, as well as Turks and Caicos. Puerto Rico now is a U.S. territory. Right, so it's a United States territory in a sense, right? So these are the overseas territories that we have within the Caribbean, right? As well as uh, just adding this, the Constitutional Republic. I'm not sure if anybody, I'm not sure if a lot of persons here see Suriname as a part of the Caribbean. Just let me know in the chat whether or not you will, you see Suriname as a part of the Caribbean, right? But but Suriname is our Constitutional Republic that we do have, right? So. It uses a, demo, a representative democracy, right, um, where the constitution serves as a supreme law in the Caribbean. Uh, well, not in the Caribbean, sorry, in the state itself. But Suriname is one of our own, is our only constitutional republic that we have there, right? We also have our French overseas departments, right? So the history students would know the Département du Tremere, right? So the overseas departments, Guadeloupe, 
right? And we also have Martinique, all right? So here are the, these are the overseas departments of France, all right? So directly in control, well, not directly in control by France because they do have positions called prefects, right? That that look over the prefecture and you know how these countries are run and persons within these territories have the same rights right some more or less the same rights as persons within france as well as some amount of voting power right as well as some um some of the um or you would say you know benefits of being a french citizen right these are the department overseas the world the french overseas departments within the caribbean right so those are different types of political systems or government systems that we have in the Caribbean constitutional monarchies, pres parliamentary republics, presidential republics, the communist state, only one, overseas territories, Suriname, constitutional republic, and we have the French overseas departments. Are there any questions or concerns? Any questions or concerns? All right, so if we're free to move on, just drop a one in the chat. I'm surprised there are no questions there. Nobody has like a question about one thing or two or no. Okay. Because so. this wasn't really the bad part of Carib studies, to be honest. Oh, oh, so you're telling me that when I start talking about what, you know, okay, let me not actually bring up the terms. There are three terms. Mm culture right let me just say that um culture tends to be an issue right um probably the sociological aspects of caribbean studies is a kind of weird but we'll look at that um colonial affiliations generally the colonial affiliations right a part of the caribbean so we just generally need to know this um so the spanish colonies right we know the spanish colonies within jamaica was jamaica at one point puerto rico dominican republic cuba trinidad and tobago and puerto rico well why is Puerto Rico there twice? Um, so, yeah, this is why I need to fix these things before, you know, sending the PowerPoint, right? So, Spanish-speaking countries, the Spanish colonies within the Caribbean, right? We also have the French colonies, right? So, Haiti, Martinique, Guadeloupe, St. Ma Martin, right? Um, shared with the Netherlands, by the way, right? We also have the British colonies, right? So, the British were particularly um, lucrative within the Caribbean. Right, so all of these territories, right? Note that Trinidad was, you know, partly Spanish, right? Partly French and partly British. Like Trinidad had it all, right? So they they were wasting no time. They had it all. Um. So yeah. Um. We also have just general list of the British colonies here, right? We had the Dutch colonies as well. So the Netherlands Antilles, right? So we have Aruba, Curacao, but near we have Saint Martin. Right, we have Saba, St. Eustatius, right? So all of these were the Dutch colonies per se. Alright. We have one small Swedish colony here, right? That is no a part of France briefly, right? Saint um Bartholomew, right? Just just one, all right? Just one. Right. So we have that there, and we have the Danish colonies, right? So the US Virgin Islands, Saint Thomas and St. John were once Danish colonies within the Caribbean, but are now overseen by the United States. All right. So we have, those are all the colonial affiliations that we have within the Caribbean. All right. So the Spanish affiliations, French, the British, the Dutch, that one Swedish colony that I think is interesting. So like, it's just interesting. Um, and the Danish colonies. All right. So in the end, specifically, the political structures, right, of the Caribbean really came through the European aspects of domination, right? The Westminster system, our legal systems and those type of things, how we do government comes from the metropole, the persons who want to colonize these islands, right, these territories, right? So our perspective on what democracy is, is westernized, right? Our perspective, the mere fact that we have parliaments, right, these are European in nature, right? All of our political systems, um, well, government systems and government types stem from European politics, right? So that's important, right? Um, another lasting imprint that we could say comes from um, the European domination would be language and religion and those type of things, but they're not really political, 
but it's there to really note, all right? So British democracies, French departments, right, overseas and associ overseas overseas territories and associated states, these are all borrowed from European models, right? And that's where we generally have um, you know, these forms of government within the Caribbean, right? So it's all from, you know, colon um colonialism, right? Now, the last thing about the political definition is really political blocks, right? What are some political blocks you guys can name? What are some political blocks that exist within the Caribbean? Just list some. You can do so in the chat and you can always unmute and just let me know. What are some political blocks you know of within the Caribbean? By the way, they're painfully obvious. Nobody wants to add one? Okay, so let me start. CARICOM is a political block. Are there any other political blocks that we have in the Caribbean that you guys know of? Let me check the chat real quick. Not seeing any. So CARICOM is one. Any other? Wow. Tough crowd. <laughs> Go ahead. Is there one upstairs with an O? Please finish that. <laughs> Please finish that. I beg you. Um, o, the OECS, yes. Yes, um, okay. Cool, cool. <laughs> um, the ACS, those type of political blocks. So we have different political blocks in Caribbean. So CARICOM, right? You're permitted to know generally the states that exist in CARICOM, right? So here are some states in CARICOM. I know the CARICOM is the Caribbean community, right? We also have the OECS, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, which arguably is more successful than CARICOM. We'll discuss what I mean by that. All right, so we have all of these states here, all right, and some associated member states of CARICOM as well. Um, not a CARICOM, but um, OECS, all right? So that's OECS there. Um, usually, you can see some of the countries existing in all political blocks, but not all of them exist in all the political blocks, all right? So OECS, right? We have the ACS, the Association of Caribbean States, right? All CARICOM member states are a part of this. As well as Cuba, Mexico, some Central the well, the Central American countries, right? South American countries with Caribbean coastlines, right? So all of them are part of the ACS. Right? The Association of Caribbean States. Right? So we're looking at that. So po political definition of the Caribbean, right? That's generally it for the political definition of the Caribbean, right? So for the political definition of the Caribbean, let me just go back to the map and let's see where the political definition of the Caribbean carries, carries us back to, all right? So we know that that generally entails the political blocks, the type of systems that exist within the Caribbean, etc. right? Now, the political systems that exist within the Caribbean can be used to define the Caribbean, the world is not the Caribbean, um, the Caribbean somewhat, right? But that's a disadvantage there. So if you try to use like the forms of governments, types of governments, can you guys see my screen by the way? Yes, sir. Sir, Pete? I was asking if you guys can see my screen. It's loading, all right? But what I'm saying is that if we use the forms of governments to really define what the Caribbean is, it would be painfully obvious to know that there are other communist states, there are other parliamentary um, democracies that exist elsewhere in the world, right? But the main definer of the political definition is our blocks, right? Our political blocks that exist within the Caribbean, right? So CARICOM generally consists of all Caribbean states, states that we think or that we associate with the notion of being Caribbean, right? But we also have the OECS, right? That it encompasses most of the Lesser Antilles. So it's really, it's really matching up with the historical definition and the geographical definition, right? There, but there are some states that we that are included in the political definition that te that we don't really tend to include, right? As Caribbean, for example, a lot of persons really don't think that persons from the u.s virgin island the, the virgin islands a lot of persons don't see them as caribbean right but a lot of persons do 
and I acknowledge them, right? I know persons from the US Virgin Islands and stuff like that. They are completely they Caribbean culture exists there, right? So the type of culture that we associate with Caribbean culture exists on these islands, right? But other countries that we don't normally see as Caribbean, like Venezuela, Panama, Costa Rica, right? Some other states within Central America and South America, right, are grouped in political blocks that um are Caribbean in nature, right? And they group they group them, right, into the Caribbean based off of the political definition, right? So basically what I'm saying is that the states that are in the blocks are included under the political definition. And some of the states are that are included in the political blocks, we don't normally call them um Caribbean, right? For example, like Honduras and Nicaragua. When we speak of Caribbean, we don't normally mention Honduras or Nicaragua. We don't normally mention Mexico. We don't normally mention Colombia. All right? But these states are associated in some political blocks that exist within the Caribbean. All right? So those are just some of the limitations of the political definition in a sense. All right?